Let's get started on Module 6, Creating and Managing Virtual Storage. In this module, we will talk about managing storage area networks and virtual disks. This chapter is a big one, broken up into six different sections. Storage concepts, configuring iCSI SCSI storage, configuring network attached storage and the network file system storage, Fiber Channel, SAN storage, VMFS Data Store, and VSA, the Virtual Storage Appliance. Let's get started on Lesson 1, Storage Concept. Here's the overview, and then I will explain these components individually. A virtual machine saves files to a virtual hard disk. And a virtual hard disk is a single file which is stored on the VMFS data store. The VMFS, VMFS data store is a logical volume. It is located on a LUN logical unit number, which is part of a disk array. And that logical unit number contains the SAN hard disks, the disks in the disk array. So let's look at the individual components. ESXi supports different storage technologies. Direct attached storage, fiber channel, fiber channel over Ethernet, iSCSI, and network attached storage using NFS. Let's start out with a review of the components of a storage area network. A data store is a place where data is stored. And direct attached storage means that the hard disks are inside the ESXi hosts. There is not an external disk array. There is not an external RAID array. With direct storage, the disks are in the ESXi host, and that's all. The problem with that is that the ESXi hosts cannot share a common disk. And the reason we want them to share a common disk is so we can implement more advanced features, particularly fault tolerance. Now, if we want to use a storage area network, to create a storage area network, we get an external disk array. Some people call this a RAID array, or just call it an external disk array. The disk array is connected to the ESXi host by way of a switch. And the virtual machines save data to the hard disks, which are on the disk array. Now, this, of course, is a very simple storage area network. Another example of a storage area network would have many ESXi hosts and many different disk arrays. Here is another diagram, really, of the same thing. And this diagram shows that many different virtual machines running on different ESXi hosts can all access the same data storage. That's important for other advanced features, which we will look at later in the course, such as high availability, fault tolerance, and distributive resource scheduling particularly load balancing. So I hope everybody is clear regarding the difference between a storage area network and a production area, a production network. The production network is just the regular network. Users, workstations, connect to the switch, which connects with the ESXi host. The production area network carries traffic from the users to the virtual machines on the ESXi host. Now, a storage area network carries traffic from the virtual machines to the disk arrays on the storage area network. A production network is big. It can be 100 meters across. But a storage area network is contained in one room. It's going to be no more than 10 feet across. Storage area network is contained in the data center. There are different SAN technologies, fiber channel, iSCSI, fiber channel over Ethernet, 
network attached storage. Fiber channel uses fiber optic cable, fiber optic, optic adapters, fiber optic switches to connect the ESXi host to the disk array. This is fast, 16 gigabits per second, but it's pretty expensive, a thousand bucks for one controller card, five to 10,000 bucks for a small switch. Conversely, iSCSI is another technology that uses standard gigabit Ethernet switches to connect ESXi host to disk arrays, and that's a significantly lower cost. I'm talking 50 bucks for a controller card as opposed to a thousand. Not as fast though, it's only one gigabit per second. Now let's look at the logical components of a storage area network. Logical unit number, BMFS data store, and virtual hard disks. <clears throat> disk array contains disks. And a logical unit number is a container that aggregates the disks into one logical unit that the ESXi host can connect to. The logical unit number can contain all the disks or some of the disks. A VMFS data store is a logical volume which spans the multiple hard disks which are contained in the logical unit number. Virtual machines store virtual hard disks to the VMFS data store which sends the data to the hard disks on the disk array. A VMFS data store, this is just another diagram of the exact same thing, just a different way of looking at it. VMFS data store spans multiple disks. Virtual machines store the virtual hard disks, the virtual machines store the virtual hard disks on the VMFS data store. Virtual machine, a virtual machine saves files to a virtual hard disk which is a single file. Now that single file appears to the guest operating system as if it's a physical hard disk, but a virtual hard disk is a single file which is stored on the VMFS data store. And the VMFS data store is a logical volume which spans multiple disks in the storage area network disk array. So. That's storage area network concepts. Now let's get a little more specific and show how we would set up an iSCSI storage area network. iSCSI is where we use standard gigabit Ethernet switches to connect ESS XI host to disk arrays. Yeah, fiber channel is faster, but iSCSI much cheaper. So we got six steps. One, we create a logical unit number on the disk array. Two, we make sure there is a second network interface card in the ESXi host to create the storage area network. And we create a virtual switch to create the storage area network. Then we connect the iSCSI adapter to the logical unit number. We create the VMFS data store. And then we create the hard disks on the data store. We'll start out with step one, creating a logical unit number on the disk array. The disk array we're using here is uh, made by a company called Synology. It's, um, it's not a VMware product, it's just, just a disk array, but they're all pretty similar. So to configure this disk array, to configure the logical unit number on the disk array, I click on the Synology Assistant and it connects me to the disk array. Disk array has an IP address of 10.0.0.20. There is currently no iSCSI on on the system, so we click on Create. I will call it LUN1, followed by Next. Target name, we'll just call it Target1, and the IQN is a painful name. It stands for iSCSI Qualified Name, and you take the name of the company, Synology.com, and you turn it around. And you start out with IQN dot, 
the month and year that Synology got their internet domain name of Synology.com and that was the January of the year 2000. Dot com dot Synology colon dot whatever name that you would like to add to this um, particular logic uh, L-U-N. It's a pretty pretty painful naming scheme but that's that's the way they do it. I-Q-N followed by the year and the month that Synology.com got their internet domain name, followed by .com, .synology, colon, disk station name. The Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol is where I can type in a password here and then to connect to this logical unit number from the ESXi host, I would have to have that password as well. This adds for an even higher degree of security. We're not going to use it click on next, click on apply, and there it says processing 1%, and there it's done, and we've created the logical unit number. If we click on iSCSI target, we can see there is the iSCSI name. And you remember the IP address is 10.0.0.20. So, fine, ready to go. The logical unit number has been created on the disk array. Once again, this whole procedure here is not a VMware kind of a thing. Works the same way on most disk arrays. So the logical unit number can contain some or all of the disks. It is a container that aggregates all the disks together. Next thing to do is to create a storage virtual switch and connect the iSCSI adapter to the logical unit number. So we select configuration, this configuration tab, and under hardware we select networking, and this is our production network right here. We want to create a storage area network. So we click on add networking, and under connection types, don't select virtual machine connection, that's for the production network. We select VM kernel. VM kernel handles traffic for iSCSI. So we select VM kernel followed by next. And then we select the network interface card that we're going to use for this storage area network. The first network interface card, VM NIC0, is already being used by the production network. So we select the second network interface card, which is called VM NIC1 to be the storage area network, followed by next. We give it a label. The port group properties gets a label, and that label will just be called SAN Storage Network. I will not select the checkbox for fault tolerance. We will talk about fault tolerance later in the course. So there's our storage area network, and there's the second network interface card. Click on next. Now we need to assign the IP address to this network interface card, which is the same subnet as the disk array. And the, the disk was 10.0.0.20. So we will just assign this some number that starts with 10 and does not end with 20. So I'll just use 10.0.0.4, followed by next. And that's our storage area network. Storage area network. Virtual network card, click on finish. There is our storage area network. If we move up and select storage adapters, we can click on add to add the iSCSI software adapter and right click and select properties. And if we click on network configuration, it is not associated with any network. Remember, an iSCSI initiator, on one hand, it connects to the storage area network, but from the point of view of the virtual machine, it's just a SCSI card which connects to the hard disk. So we click on Add, and we will select the storage network that we just created, followed by Next. Then we click on Static Discovery, and when we click on Add, 
we type in the IP address of the iSCSI server, or we should say the iSCSI disk array. That's what the iSCSI server is. It's a disk array. And that was 10.0.0.20. Port number, thirty-two sixty. And this will open up that port number in the firewall. We don't need to manually open the port number in the firewall. And then we type in that painfully iSCSI qualified name. And we did not use the challenge handshake authentication protocol on the disk array, so we won't use it here. But if, if we did use it, it would have to be the same password that we put on the disk array, but we will not. And click on okay and you will also notice the dynamic discovery automatically updates you don't need to do anything there click on close then it says it needs to do a rescan and right now you will see that this iSCSI software adapter is not associated with any sort of disks when we click on yes it does the rescan and now we can see that this iSCSI adapter corresponds to this external disk array. The next thing to do, I mean, now we've got the SAN, it's all set up. The next thing to do is now to create the VMFS data store. So to create the VMFS data store, we go to the configuration, we're still in the configuration tab. Under hardware, we select storage. And there is our existing internal disk array but we will click on add storage and we will select storage type select a data stat, data store for fiber channel or iSCSI we'll take iSCSI click on next this gives us a list of all the available iSCSI arrays well there's only one available so we select it followed by next we typically select the latest virtual machine file system unless we need to select an older one for backward compatibility followed by next it says that the hard disk is blank and that it will create a partition they use the word partition one is a better word followed by next the partition will be created followed by next I'll give it a data store name such as a data store dash san click on next I can allocate all of the space to that data store or I could allocate some of the space to the data store and if I wanted to I could come back later and I could stretch it out and use the rest of the space or use all of the space click on next I click on finish now you can see that the new data store has been added for the storage area network The virtual machine file system data store is now available on the storage area network. The next thing to do is to create a new virtual machine and to store the virtual hard disk on the VMFS data store, which will store that virtual hard disk on the disk array. We select the ESXi host, right click on it, select new virtual machine, select custom followed by next. Give it a name, file server one, followed by next. I don't want to store it on the VM on the data on the data store which is internal to the ESXi host. I want to select it on the SAN data store, which is the disk array, followed by next. We'll select the latest machine versions. We'll select the Windows 2008 operating system, followed by next. We will allocate just one processor, followed by next. We will allocate 4 gig of RAM, followed by next. We will take the um, the Broadcom a gigabit Ethernet adapter, followed by next. We will select the LSI Logic SAS Serial Attached Storage a SCSI controller, because that's the one that's compatible with this operating system, followed by next create a new virtual disk. Well, absolutely, that's the whole purpose of this exercise right here. Notice across the top, a virtual disk is composed of one or more files on the host file system. Together, these files appear as a single hard disk to the guest operating system. So definitely select new virtual hard disk followed by next. 40 gig hard disk, I can, if I thin provision it, it takes up less space on the data store. But the point here is the location. If I specify the location followed by browse, 
I can make sure that this virtual, the virtual hard disk will be stored on the external disk array, followed by OK, followed by Next, and Finish. So now what I've done is I've created a virtual hard disk and stored it on the BMFF data store on the storage area network, so let's take a look at it. Under the configuration tab, under storage, there is the two data stores, internal, external. To look at the SAN data store, the disk array, I right click on that guy, and under Browse Data Store, you will see, as you already know, that there is a separate folder for each virtual machine, and in that folder are the virtual machine files, and there is a .vmdk file, which is, which is the virtual disk. The virtual machine's virtual hard disk is stored on the VMFS data store, which is located on the disk array on the storage area network. Let's take a look at the network map. To view a network map, you scroll over to the right here, and you'll see the network map tab. And when you click on that, it shows you the relationship between the virtual machines to the data stores. If you look at data store 8, it's only been being used by one virtual machine, no, two virtual machines, and only one of them is turned on. And then the second data store right here is being accessed by six different virtual machines. We talked about network interface card teaming before, having multiple network interface cards in an ESXi host for fault tolerance and load distribution. Well, you could also have, have multiple network interface cards in the disk array as well. Why? Fault tolerance and load distribution. Fault tolerance means if one one card goes bad, that's okay, we got the other. And load balancing means traffic can go through both network interface cards at the same time, giving us greater throughput. A multi-pathing path, algorithm is the software that that performs the load balancing function. So configuring storage summary, you create a SAN, which means first you got to get a second network interface card, the ESXi host, and connect it to a disk array, and then create the logical unit number on the disk array. Then create a, a virtual switch, which also creates a port group. Connect the iSCSI adapter to the logical unit number. Create the VMFS data store, and then finally create the virtual hard disks on the data store. In this lab, you will, one, using the vSphere client, create a VM kernel port group. Then configure the iSCSI adapter. There's not one there. Collect, click on add iSCSI adapter with the port name, with the name of the port group, with the IP address and iSCSI qualified name of the storage area network disk array, if you have one, if your lab has one, then create a new data store on that disk array, then create a new virtual machine and store the virtual machine's hard disk on the new data store, and then, just like I demoed, browse the contents of the new data store and locate the virtual machine files that you just created. This concludes part one.